Hey there, pimple stoppers. Benzoyl peroxide is a foundational acne treatment. It's probably the most effective single treatment out there. It can work for inflammatory pimples as well as blackheads and whiteheads. It's also one of the only treatments we have available that can prevent the development of antibiotic resistance to other acne treatments. However, there can be some common mistakes when it comes to using benzoyl peroxide as well. In this episode, I wanna go through what are some of the common mistakes we can make with benzoyl peroxide and how to avoid them. The first mistake that I commonly see in my practice as a board certified dermatologist is using too high of a strength of benzoyl peroxide. When we look at head-to-head -head studies comparing different strengths of benzoyl peroxide on the base, we don't really see much additional benefit in terms of clearing skin above four or 5%, but we do see more irritation. And irritation is a common limitation when it comes to using benzoyl peroxide products. These can cause skin dryness and other issues. And so if we can help minimize irritation, we're gonna be able to take advantage of the beneficial aspects of benzoyl peroxide. So I generally recommend not using something higher than four or 5% on the face. On the body, I do think sometimes higher percentages like 10% can be helpful. The skin there is thicker. It tends to be better able to tolerate it and irritation tends to be less of an issue. But for the face, I don't recommend going above four or 5% concentration for most people. In addition, I also tend to prefer washes over leave-on products. I find anecdotally, these can sometimes be less irritating. And additionally, wash products, if you rinse them off well, there shouldn't be really any issue with the bleaching things. Where a leave-on product, if you put that on and then you lay on a pillow or if your clothes come into contact with it, that product can bleach fabrics. And that can be a common nuisance that occurs with benzoyl peroxide containing products. Another important mistake to avoid when it comes to benzoyl peroxide containing products is being thoughtful about how we use it together with other parts of our acne treatment plan. Often acne requires a multimodal regimen that targets different aspects of the pathogenesis of acne, different causes of acne, and we go into that in other videos on the channel, but there are some especially important considerations when it comes to benzoyl peroxide. The first is if one's using a topical antibiotic called Dapsone, we don't want to use it at the exact same time as a leave-on benzoyl peroxide product. Benzoyl peroxide can interact with Dapsone and create this kind of yellow-orange discoloration. Now this will eventually just go away with time on the skin, but it can be something that can be striking and disturbing if it occurs. So if one is gonna use benzoyl peroxide and Dapsone, either use a wash or you can rinse it off, it's not there anymore, or separate them in time. Use one in the morning and one at night to avoid them both being on the skin at the same time where this problem can arise. Another important acne treatment interaction to consider are topical retinoids and retinols. Benzoyl peroxide can break down these sometimes unstable molecules, particularly Tretinoin, kind of cream and gel, sort of the traditional generic versions of these can break down in the presence of benzoyl peroxide. And so if we're using a traditional Tretinoin generic product and benzoyl peroxide, again, either we want to use a wash that's not there anymore, or we want to try to separate them in time. You'd be using the benzoyl peroxide in the morning and the Tretinoin product at night. And Tretinoin, again, we use these at night because the sun can also break it down. So if we use it in the morning, that may not work. For other topical retinoids, like adapalene or tazeratine, this issue of benzoyl peroxide interacting with that topical retinoid is less of an issue. You could use these together. In fact, there are combination products that combine adapalene and benzoyl peroxide together that are extremely effective for acne. Additionally, newer formulations of tretinoin that use microspheres or that use encapsulation with silica technology, these can also avoid this kind of breakdown interaction. So we actually even have some combination products that combine tretinoin and benzoyl peroxide together using this silica encapsulation type of approach. So tretinoin and benzoyl peroxide can be stable together, but if you have a generic traditional tretinoin product, we wanna be careful about using that at the same time as benzoyl peroxide. For other topical retinoids, this really isn't an issue. So adapalene, tazeratine, this isn't something that we expect to be a problem. Another common mistake that I see with benzoyl peroxide products and really across the board for acne treatments is not being patient enough. Unfortunately, acne treatments are just slow. Even the fastest acne treatments really take at least four to eight weeks to start seeing results. And for this reason, I often talk about it as preventing your future acne instead of treating the acne that you have right now. Consistency and persistence are the name of the game here. And so with any acne treatment, including benzoyl peroxide, it really does take a good at least one or two months of using it before we can say that it's not working well enough. And honestly, most products need more like two to four months before you can get to having a real sense of what it's gonna do for your skin. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that side effects like irritation and dryness can be an important issue with benzoyl peroxide containing products. And so what can we do about that, right? Another reason that people aren't successful using benzoyl peroxide containing products is their skin gets irritated, they stop using it. So as I mentioned, using a lower strength product can often be important, not going above four or 5% on the face, but also making sure that we're using a moisturizer to help protect the skin barrier is an important part of really any acne treatment regimen, especially one that contains something that can be drying and irritating like benzoyl peroxide or topical retinoids. And there we have some other videos where we go into some details about choosing a moisturizer in acne and rosacea. Really the most important thing is finding something that you like how it feels on your skin and is affordable and using that at least once a day to try to help protect that skin barrier, restore that skin barrier. We know the skin barrier is important in acne and rosacea. If we're able to help treat the skin barrier, we're going to improve acne just on its own. As I mentioned earlier, a major issue with benzoyl peroxide containing products can be irritation. This can limit their use and their effectiveness. And so taking steps to help protect and heal the skin barrier is very important as part of any acne treatment regimen, but especially one that contains something that can be irritating like benzoyl peroxide or topical retinoids. When it comes to choosing a moisturizer, really anything that you like how it feels on your skin and is affordable and is helping to hydrate the skin, that's what matters. There's not necessarily a single best brand. I have some other videos on the channel that go into some more details about how to think through selecting a moisturizer for your skin. But ultimately what matters is it's something that you like how it feels on your skin, it's doing the job, and it's affordable. When it comes to using a moisturizer, it is important to try to have that at least once a day as part of your acne skincare regimen. Even for people who might think they have more oily skin, helping to protect the skin barrier can reduce the stress on the oil glands in the skin, and it might actually help reduce oiliness. So moisturization is a really important part of overall acne care, and especially when we're using potentially irritating products like benzoyl peroxide and topical retinoids. Another common issue with benzoyl peroxide products is sun sensitivity. And so sun protection is also an important part of an overall treatment regimen that includes benzoyl peroxide products. This is also important just broadly in acne and rosacea. Sun, UV can cause inflammation in the skin and can contribute to breakouts for some individuals. And so sun protection is an important part of our overall treatment strategy especially because some of our common agents like benzoyl peroxide and retinoids can make our skin more sensitive to the sun. And then finally, just some thoughts about storing and handling benzoyl peroxide. There have been some recent concerns about the potential for benzoyl peroxide that break down into benzene. We have some other videos on the channel that go into this issue in more detail. I don't think that this is a major clinically relevant issue if stored and handled appropriately, but I do think this has important implications for how we think about storing and handling benzoyl peroxide products. We don't want to store them at high temperatures. We don't want to keep them on the shelf for a long time. So if one has a product that's been exposed to a lot of high temperatures for one reason or another, or has been sitting for a long time or has it expired, we want to replace those products with newer ones to avoid that risk. In addition, we want to be thoughtful about direct to consumer mail order types of products. So buying things like from a site like Amazon, because if that sits on your porch for days and days in hot weather, that could potentially lead to that product breaking down into benzene. And so we want to be thoughtful about where we purchase things from and also not having it sit in potentially conditions that are hot and might make it break down into benzene. To summarize, benzoyl peroxide can be a great part of an acne skincare regimen. However, we want to be thoughtful about how we use it to maximize the benefits of it. We want to make sure we're not using too strong of a product, not going above four or 5% on the face. We want to be thoughtful about preventing side effects by using moisturizers and sunscreen. We want to also consider how it might interact with other parts of our acne care routine. We want to make sure we're separating benzoyl peroxide from tretinoin containing products or dapsone to avoid potential interactions between them. And we want to be thoughtful about how we store and handle benzoyl peroxide containing products to maximize their safety. In addition, we need to make sure just like with any part of our skincare routine that we're patient, acne things take a while to work consistency is the name of the game, and it really does take at least four to eight weeks to start to see benefits from using something like benzoyl peroxide. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel. Your support means a lot to me, and give this video a like so we can share it with the community. Ask me your questions about acne and benzoyl peroxide in the comments below, and until next time, see ya.